I just heard that uh, the crisis is more a financial crisis than anything else. Um, I'm, I'm a bit more doubtful um, than Mr. Thielmans, but he just left. Um, disclaimer first, at office I'm known as an optimist, but what, what I'm going to tell now is probably not as optimistic as I would like to tell it. I think the, the, the big thing that we are witnessing right now is we are witnessing the result of decades of living on debt. So, kind of, so what, what we see right now is kind of the reversal of a process that has been taken since World War II. Piling up debt, having um, huge fiscal deficits, having high debt levels not only in the public sector but also in the private sector. And from an economic point of view, um, very cruel, what we are witnessing right now is simply deflating a couple of bubbles. Um, which for the people in Spain is much more painful than for an economist working at Brussels right now because it means high unemployment, um, um, really very weak growth, a lot of painful adjustment. And I think this is um, not only happening in, uh, in Europe, but it's also happening in, in other countries, in, in other regions of the world, actually in the entire industrial world. And that's something that is going to keep us busy. So, so much, that's more the, 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 the long-term picture. If you look at the short-term picture, because that's what I have to explain, so what's happening right now, um, Europe is looking for growth. Normally, Europe is always looking for growth elsewhere so that we can export. Um, so first of all, we would look to the U.S. Yeah, and what we've seen here in, in the U.S. is that the U.S. has been the surprise of 20, 2012. Yeah, we've seen a decent recovery over the last couple of months, since the end of last year, we've seen that the labor market is stabilizing. We even see the real estate market stabilizing in the U.S. And we think that this is going to continue, but only a couple of more months. Why? Because if you, if you look at the, uh, the, the public finances and the political discussion in the U.S., the U.S. economy would qualify as an honorable member of the Eurozone periphery. Um, we have a debt-to-GDP ratio of around 100%. That's close to the Belgian level. Um, we have a fiscal deficit of 10 to 8%. Um, this would make countries like Spain uh, or, or Greece jealous. Uh, so it's much more than in most other European countries. And we have not had the discussion on how to bring fiscal policy back on a sustainable path yet in the U.S. The only thing we had was last year, we remember probably over the summer month when there was the debt ceiling discussion in the U.S., but that was it. So everything has been postponed until the presidential elections. So the, 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 our guess here is that's nice, we see a recovery, it won't be enough to, to carry on uh, the, the European growth, and the big awakening or the cruel awakening will come next year when whatever, whoever the new president will be, he, he has to start with fiscal consolidation. So U.S., shaky. Then we always look to Asia, China. Shouldn't we, should we, we should export, or our exports to Asia have kind of led the recovery, especially if you look at core Eurozone countries, Germany. Um, so the big question is, is China strong enough to carry the global economy, or at least the European economy? Um, and then we've seen kind of opposing signals or contrary signals over the last couple of months. What we see here is kind of le leading indicators, the PMIs improving again. Everything above 50 um, points to, uh, to, uh, to an economic expansion. Everything below 50 would point to a contraction. So you see, it looks as if China is, um, is, is stabilizing, but another leading indicator is going down. And one growth is just simply the, the money that is in the economy. So the money that is in the economy is clearly slowing down. And then I'm talking to an audience of experts. The, um, something that is worrying us is that it looks like a real estate bubble. And um, so, so just judging from Europe, what we see in China, this is like these good, nice projects that uh, the mayor of Brussels has just talked about. Um, there are hundreds of them in China. So th this is just a picture and, uh, of, a, of a nice, um, excellent shopping mall in China. And you see that all the stores look very good, very exclusive, but just count how many people are actually right now in the shopping mall shopping. So you will find two there on the left picture, 
and I think one or two on the right picture. So, and, and, and this is, a, it's anecdotal evidence. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very, very hard to, to get your fingers and, and to, to really get a feeling on what, what's happening in China. But we have the suspicion that um, we're seeing a bubble. The, the big question is how, how will it uh, adjust? Will it adjust more the, the Spanish way, the American way, or will they find a Chinese way? Of course, if, if, if you look at that, for example, that the government has much more influence on, on the Chinese banks, for example, so, so it should be possible to adjust. But clearly here, what we, what we do see, it is a bubble, um, which, which also means China will probably not be strong enough to carry on the, uh, the Eurozone economy. And that is exactly the problem, because we need some growth drivers. But what we see in, in the Eurozone right now is we're flirting with recession. Yeah, so you were, that, that's kind of a sentiment indicator. Um, so if it wasn't for Germany, the, the, the Eurozone economy would have already been in a, in a, in a deep recession. It, so you, you see that actually, if you take these are historic, historical um, sentiment indicators, all countries except for Germany are actually right now doing worse than their historical averages. Yeah, so therefore, so nev never, never be kind of tricked by the, by the Eurozone numbers because they are they're clearly blurred by the German picture right now. And, I think, and, and, that's, and so therefore, we can, where should growth come from? Um, if, you, if you listen to, for example, the European Commission, which just came out with, the, with their forecast, they always see a recovery in the second half of the year. So the funny thing is they always see a recovery somewhere in the future. And even further in the future, they, they, they see strong economic growth again. If you try to look at the fundamentals and you think that austerity will continue, actually all European countries except for Finland and Germany are right now implementing some kind of austerity measures. So that's gone away on growth. Um, so we, we have then, but then so we also have high unemployment. 24% in, in, uh, in, in Spain, double-digit unemployment in, in many other European countries, even double-digit unemployment in, in France. So to think that domestic demand could become a growth driver is also at least very, so I wouldn't say, not, not say let's say not naive, but ambitious. Um, so wh where, where else should it come from? So the export sector is slowing down, the domestic sector looks, looks rather weakish um, and at the same time, or at, at finally, we also are facing highly uncompetitive economies. Yeah, so so that, that's the whole thing. If, if you look at um, Spain or let's take Greece as the, as the worst example, um, how, how, ca how can they create growth in the short term? There, 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 is, no, there, there is no silver bullet for Greece. Um, of course, you have people talking about, but, but well, for example, if they get a new, a new their own currency back, they could start exporting again. The, the simple answer is, if, if you look at the last four decades, um, there has no, been no single decade in which actually net exports contributed positively to growth in neither Greece, Spain, or Portugal. So these countries have always been a net importer. If you look at, 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 the, at the, main, the main export sectors in Greece, it's the tourism industry and it's maritime freight. So that, that's really not a lot. So even, even with a cheaper currency, it, it, would, it would not be enough to, to kind of lift the economy out of a recession. Uh, so that, that's, that's something to, to, to keep in mind. So we have to do structural adjustments, which is a fantastic mantra, but which really means we have to see um, economies reforming. We, we have to see that, for example, labor is um, shifted from, like in the case of Spain, the construction sector into an export sector that still has to be built up. So th this is a process which is going to take years, e may maybe even decades. And within this process, um, we will hardly have, have a strong economic growth. So which brings me immediately, because I have to be crisp and brief, so I'm rushing. Um, so the economic outlook for the Eurozone, of course, is highly dependent on what's happening in the Eurozone crisis. Um, and of course, I could talk hours on, on the Eurozone crisis. What I, what I brought here is a, a couple of pictures on Spain. 
also interesting for you because this is a real estate market. It is a clearly real estate driven economic model. Um, the, 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 the broader real estate sector, investment sector in, in Spain, I think, accounts for roughly 15% of the GDP. In most other European countries, it's close to five, between 5 and 8%. Uh, so you, we all see where the bubble is coming from. So we, we, we try to see, so we've seen prices dropping by 20, 25% so far from peak to now in Spain. And we, we try to get an idea on how much further can prices drop. If we, t if we take the, uh, the, the price to rent ratio and we, and we, uh, we take the US as, as an example, we get to another 20% of price drops in Spain before we could see a bottom of, of the real estate uh, market. And also then look back of what, what is happening in the U.S. What we see right now in the U.S. is still that we've, we, it looks as if we've, re, if we've reached the bottom, but we are staying at this bottom already for quite some time in the U.S. So uh, reaching a bottom does not uh, mean that you have an immediate um, rebound. But let's say 20, 25% further price drops. What does this mean? In Spain, obviously, unemployment goes up. One. And second, banks will get into problems. Yeah, so that, and, and that, that's, <clears throat> that's the, big, the big problem we have. So real estate financing. Um, so the, the, the Spanish cajas um, are, are really coming under severe pressure, are under severe pressure, and, uh, and are having a lack of capital. So, and, and of course, the, the further or the more prices will drop, the bigger the pressure on the, on, on, on the financial system there, which also explains, if you just now come to, to the current or the ongoing discussions, is that in our view, um, it will be very hard for Spain to continue without European support. Yeah, what, 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 what we are ex expecting to happen in, in, the, in the next month is some way or the other that, that Spain will get a bailout. It's um, probably a kind of bailout light, um, which is just for the sake of the banks, so which would be a loan from the European Rescue Fund to the Spanish government with the, the only aim at recapitalizing the Spanish banks. But that's, that's something that, that is more or less uh, um, in, in, in the offing. So we, we have Spain, we have Greece, um, which, is, which is a totally different story, an ongoing, ongoing story as well. That's a nice one um, because um, there are, you, you, can, you can just make, make a bet on uh, whether Greece or in, in the UK betting on everything is possible. So you can, you can also bet on, uh, on, on, the, on the likelihood of, of a Eurozone country leaving the Eurozone by 2013. And we've seen, of course, obviously, after the elections in Greece, um, odds for, for a Greek exit have, have increased again. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's also, and, and just maybe that's interesting to, to stay in on, on time. It's an ongoing discussion. I also, if, if I knew what the outcome was, I wouldn't stand here. I would, I would just make my bet here and then uh, and, and, and buy a Greek island. Um, so well, we, to, 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 get it, to give you just a, a feeling of, of possible consequences. And so we, we talk, so what, what are the options? Greece leaving the Eurozone, or Greece staying within the Eurozone. Is leaving the Eurozone really a feasible option from an economic point of view? From a political point of view, it's something totally different, but from an economic point of view. As I said, Greece hardly has an export sector. So what would happen if Greece now would, would decide to leave the Eurozone? Um, we would have immediately a bank run. Um, the, um, many, many Greek banks would go bust. A couple of them would have to be nationalized by printing new money. Others would simply go bust. Um, money which hasn't left the, the country so far would leave the country. Um, you would introduce, in, introduce a new currency. There are many ways to do it. Um, it would not solve the problem of having actually a fiscal deficit. No, to the contrary, the Greek government would immediately have to stop expenditures, like for example California did. Yeah, you would have immediate, immediate government shutdown because Greece would not get funding. They, 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 they would, see, they would see, just sit on their cash and they could just actually pay out um, 
um, salaries for the civil workers or expenditures from, on, on their tax incomes. So it's really on an accrual basis. Um, so which means immediate government shutdown, expenditure cuts. You would see unemployment still going up. You would see, thanks to the new currency, inflation going through the roof. So you, you, you would see energy prices going up. You would see food prices going up. And if, if I at least think of high unemployment, high energy and food prices, I immediately think of what we saw uh, at least last year in North Africa and the Middle East, um, the potential of social unrest. Uh, on top of that, with a, with a clearly um, political, um, disintegrated society. So which means, is this the favorite vacation destination for core Eurozone uh, people? Probably not. Uh, and and, and uh, we, we just had some anecdotal evidence, I think, uh, yesterday or late, late last week. There were numbers that actually people booking vacations in Greece, or the numbers of, of people booking vacation in Greece had, had declined. So there are actually less and less people going to Greece and not more and more people going to Greece. So this idea of, of, of a cheaper currency um, boosting the Greek economy, forget about it. You would immediately have um, spin-offs and contagion, and we start with the small countries. Think of a country like Cyprus like, uh, and a country like Bulgaria, where actually many Greek banks are around. So uh, their banks would also go immediately bust. Um, Bulgaria is, is a country which has packed, it, so, uh, which has linked its currency to the euro. Um, if, if their banks go bust, forget about uh, cup, uh, coupling your, your currency to the euro. So you would have little um, financial crises in, in Cyprus and Bulgaria. Then you would see the contagion moving on to the Western euro, Eurozone countries. So you would see bank runs, probably in Spain and Portugal. Um, you, would, you would immediately see bond yields going up. You would need to see more bailouts in Spain, in Portugal again, in Ireland again, in Italy again. So you would need to put a lot of money on the table to, um, to isolate or to fight contagion in, in other European countries. So, so cheer, it, it's simply cheer chaos, in, in which then um, probably countries like the Netherlands or Germany, taxpayers will say, is it really worth it? So you, would also, you, you could also see the, the Eurozone crumbling away from, from the, the stronger part. Because they say, why should we put our taxpayers' money on the line to save a country, other countries? And so it's, it's crumbling away. And, and, and then the worst thing is, it's like this, this first domino. It's, it's this first contagion, because either way, so if, if, if Greece, let's say, if, if a Greek exit simply leads to negative spin-offs, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, that's a, uh, a worst case scenario. But even imagine that all of a sudden Greece would turn out to be better off. Same story. So if after one or two years Greece turns out to be better off without the euro, you would obviously see other countries following. So that, that, that's the whole thing why we, we still think that, although it's a close call, um, that both the Eurozone and Greece will try everything they can um, to avoid a Greek exit. It, it, it's, simply, it's simply muddling through, muddling through. Um, which brings me to the almost final um, comments. So what, what could happen? Our, our view on, 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 on the Eurozone. So obviously, turmoil, chaos, we, we've had this. Um, can we stimulate growth? Ongoing discussion. Uh, and uh, if, if you read newspapers, um, tomorrow it's uh, dining with Herman, um, and, and, and then the Euro European leaders will, will, de will decide on, the, on this growth um, versus austerity. Um, to be frank, it, it, it's bullshit. There, 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 it, it's, not, it, it's, 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 it's not a choice. We, we, we don't have a choice between growth and austerity right now, because as I said, we've been piling up debt for, for, for four or five decades. So to, to again fight the current crisis with the old recipes doesn't make sense. Um, yes, you can argue about giving a country like Spain more time to adjust, obviously, that, and, and that's something that is going to happen. Um, you, you can also argue in favor of more European funds to, to stimulate the economies. Um, sure, 
But then, because uh, and, and that's what probably what's going to happen, we get a bit uh, a European Investment Bank trying to um, to, to stimulate investment. We, uh, we we get uh, these EU structure funds to stimulate investment to um, to find to find more more infrastructure investment in the in the West. To be a bit sarcastic, uh, I think, or I ask myself, what is the big problem right now in Spain? Is it actually the lack? Or is it the excess of investment? Um, do, do, do they have a, a lack of highways, of modern highways, or is it rather a lack of people being able to drive on these highways to, to, pay, to pay a car? And, and that's the whole thing. To, to just think of stimulating growth in, in, in the old terms of just put government money on the table, build um, some, some, some nice conference centers um, at, at, the, at, 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 the outside, at the outskirts of, of, of a city, build a new highway. Um, it's doubtful whether it's going to work this time um, because the, the question is whether there is the added value for, for the economies. Um, so which means we're going to get a bit more stimulus through European money, but in my view that's more or less kind of the, the chocolate sauce on the on the dessert, it's it's the, the the chocolate sauce to make structural reforms, and the need for sustainable public finances a bit more attractive, because in in in, in the end there there is simply no easy or or, or painless solution to the problem. Um, if if you have again if you have co um, economies that are not competitive. If you have um, the private sector or public sector, which is highly indebted, there, there is simply no solution. And, and why not? And that's um, the, the, the chart. You probably know the Nobel Prize winner, Mr. Mr. Krugman, um, from, from the US, who is always in favor of saying, we, we simply need to spend more. We need to, to, to print money, and then uh, the, um, the, the problem in, in euro would be solved. The answer to this proposal is always just look at what is happening in Europe because we are an aging society. Uh, we, 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 are, we are an aging society and th th this is what, what, what you see here just very, very, very quickly. Aging society means the older the society, the less the willingness to spend and to consume. And the higher actually the need for low inflation. Because that's if, if you are either if, if you're either receiving your uh, your pension, or if you simply have your saving money on your bank account, you don't like high inflation. So you you, you want to have a low inflation environment. That's the Japanese story, and uh, and, 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 and and which means two things: high inflation um, in the eurozone will be very hard, I think, to sell to, to many many people, not only the Germans. If people see their, their savings, let's look here in Belgium. In Belgium is the, the country of probably the, the highest sa private savings. Um, so if people see their savings melt away, uh, they, they will also uh, ask themselves, is this really needed? And the other thing is the aging society. The aging society is not only about consumption, but it's also about lower growth. And that's the, I think that, that's the whole thing. So we, we can talk about short-term stimulus, but in the end, we're also facing a reality in, in Europe, in most European countries, of aging societies, which means lower trend growth over the next 10, 20 years. So what, what we need is more a kind of rethinking of the economic model, a rethinking of where we can, we, we can find new sources of growth, um, maybe in the form of kind of renovating buildings um, to make them more uh, energy efficient, for example. Um, then really just going back the old way, taking the, the old recipes and, 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 and spend again. Because the reality, and, and that's a reality which is very hard to sell um, for politicians and also to politicians, um, that growth in Europe will be rather weakish for, for, for a really the next years, if, if, if need, even not decades. And we, we need to accept that, we, that, that that's what it is. Um, and probably kind of maintaining the current level of welfare is the highest achievable and, uh, and, and, and promising, promising growth rates um, of, of Chinese dimensions or even of dimensions that we had in the early 2000s. Um, 
I, I think is, uh, is the wrong way to go forward because it looks highly unrealistic. Which brings me to the end. Um, <laughs> There, um, the, the comparison does not really work. Um, why, for example, um, Argentina uh, was or Argentina was a producer of commodities, um, so they they were, um, in, in also in economic terms, more competitive than the, than the Greek economy. Um, and I think the, the, this being dependent on on, on imports, um, or at the other hand, being actually an, an export country makes makes a huge difference. So that what I said, if you if you only have maritime freight and, and, and tourism, the impact from it from an own from an own currency is is close to zero, and I think that's that's the biggest difference with Argentina. One more question. Yeah. Back from Stuart. Yeah. Potentially difficult question. What would the impact of greater immigration into Europe be in terms of the demographic problem, therefore the growth problem? Of, of, of greater integration, we're, we're just trying to, to quantify um, these, these issues. It's, it's an, an ongoing research project. Um, one thing, if you, um, one thing I, I know, if you would double VAT rates in, in the core Eurozone countries for one year, um, you, you could immediately um, get, get rid of all the, uh, the excess debt in the periphery, um, so debt above 60%. But doubling VAT from 21 to 42 is, is, is huge. Yeah, so the, um, uh, of course, so, which means, again, it's, it's a long process. If you, um, if you think of, for example, if the, the core countries would simply transfer 1% of their wealth, of their GDP, to the periphery countries, um, you, would, you would create almost 2% additional growth. So it, 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 it could work. So d deeper integration in terms of, of fiscal transfers could work. But, and that, that's the big but, if you, if you look at um, empirical evidence of fiscal unions, and then I'm thinking of the German one and the Belgian one. Um, what, what, what you see there is that you get a stabilization of, of income differences, but you hardly see convergence. And so that, 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 that's the whole thing. So what you, what, what, what you for example, in, uh, in, in, in Germany, what you saw is at least you saw some, um, some migration between, between the states. In, in Belgium, we hardly see migration. Um, so, so, so that's and, and, and that's the whole thing. Um, if, if you look, and I said I'm, uh, at the beginning, I'm, I'm an optimist. So, if you think of a scenario in which um, we could return to more growth, you, I would think of countries. So, so, Greece is a lost case within or without the eurozone, but, in term, but also economic. So, let's 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 leave them in, uh, just for the sake of avoiding contagion. So, then you would assume that all the countries like Spain, like Italy continue with the structural reforms in um, that the ECB, some transfers from the rich countries, from Europe, help kind of um, accompanying this process. So they, they, they help smoothening the pain. And then in two or three years from now, you see the first results of, uh, of these structural reforms. And so that, that's kind of the, 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 then you're through the deleveraging period you see the first results from a more competitive export sector um, and, and so this would be a more, more, more positive scenario but it, it would clearly it would um, involve fiscal transfers it would also involve a, a loss of national sovereignty uh, and, and we all know at least all living here in, 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 Belgium, uh, in, in, in Europe we know how difficult it is to really see um, national powers being delegated um, to the European level
って思ったもんね。